Hello folks, I'm L.A. Little and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. We take a look at these markets and we do it from a neoclassical perspective. Each time we ask ourselves what happened today and what does it tell us about the coming ones. I do the show four times a week, Monday through Thursday. It's broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Archived on YouTube, it's under the channel L.A. Little. Catch me there anytime, any place, any device, at your convenience, of course. As far as these markets, uh, they did get uh, more push today, in particular on the Dow. Uh, but before I get into that, let me make a programming note. Uh, I will do the show tonight and tomorrow. Uh, they'll probably be abbreviated tonight, probably will be, and I suspect tomorrow as well. No show the rest of the week. I uh, hope you enjoy your holidays with your family and friends and I'm going to do the same uh, with mine so uh, with that short note let's move in uh, take a look at what we got here so uh, price wise you know the Dow was the big one 0.87 uh, the Russell uh, tacked on you know, kind of got these out of order here today it looks like I've got them in order <laughs> well that's fine we'll deal with them this way I didn't I didn't save it the way I usually do the Russell was up half a percent S&PS trailed that NDX was uh, the laggard at 0.28, but again, green across the board, Dow uh, was the leader of the pack. Dollar gained today, the bonds also gained. Uh, we're not talking about large percentages. Uh, where the big moves were, were gold, silver, oil, and nat gas. 4.5%, 5% uh, basically on those two. Uh, gold and silver, two, two and a half percent lower. They got creamed. And that, uh, folks, I think is uh, still a, a, a factor uh, going forward based on what the dollar is doing. Let's pop over and look at uh, the charts. I don't have quotes. I guess everybody's on vacation now. I don't have quotes for this evening in most of the indexes and, and a couple of the sectors. So I'm going to kind of use uh, my other quote system uh, where I can. And then, uh, you know, in some places we're simply not going to have quotes. If we get them before I finish, uh, we'll take a look at them. Uh, the Dow. Dow's going for the top. 17,991. Got as high as 17,962. You can see the volume is a lot less, uh, certainly a lot less than Friday, but even less than what had been happening all last week. That's not surprising. That's probably what we're going to see, and we're going to see it even more so tomorrow. And, of course, on the abbreviated day, uh, thir uh, Wednesday, and again on Friday. And all next week, volume's gone, folks. It was, the, it was you know, if you were going to do something big and you were a big institution, you had to do it last week. Today was probably your last chance. Pushes higher, going for the highs. If we look at the S&P 500, and I'm going to flip back to the other charts for these, if we look at the S&P 500, uh, what we have over here is a swing point high at 2079.47. We're pushing into it 2078.76. So you can see you're sitting right below it. Uh, I suspect the volumes were lighter here as well. Four days straight up. Uh, it just keeps going, and I suspect we're going to hit those highs probably tomorrow and more than likely break them. If we look at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ's going for the highs as well. It's got a swing point high sitting here at uh, 4793. We closed at 4781, got as high as uh, 81. So I expect that one's going to get hit. NDX, this is the one we were watching to see if it can get over this 4300 area. So the numbers here are 4297, 9681, and 42. 97. So where are we? 42.93. Got as high as 95. So just like the S&P doing the same thing, creeping right up to the point where it's going to try to break. If it breaks, it's the highs. It's got two of them sitting up there. And again, folks, we have the setup to push even higher if they get over these highs. And that's after this straight up move again. And then the Russell. Now the Russell has already broken over its highs two swing point highs, breaks those, breaks it here, breaks it on the weekly as well. The weekly chart is the one to look at because the weekly is going after the highs up here now. 12.13.55, 12.12.82, and we're at 12.01. Expect to see it get to those highs by the end of the year at least, uh, maybe 
way before that. Indexes, I don't see anything wrong with the way the indexes uh, look or are behaving. What we're getting is just what you'd expect you'd get, and that is, is that we're seeing a grind, a grind higher, straight out, straight off the board, the bat here. Each day it just kind of grinds higher. End of the day it pushes up. Where it did not grind higher, and where we had weakness today was energy, metals, and biotechs. And biotechs mainly as a result of Gilead. If we look at that stock, that stock got hammered. 72, 72 and a half million shares came out of this thing. Um, and matter of fact, let's pop this one on. Uh, bear with me here. Let me get over to this chart. And if we put it up here, you can see it's going after those lows with volume. And let's pull it back on a weekly. And it's going to have the volume easily on the weekly. This looks like it's going to try to blow away the lows. And that would take it all the way back to do a retest regen. 84.75. Yeah, it's actually done it once already. So that would be the second trip back. This could get really ugly. I don't know how ugly it's going to get. And this has been a very strong stock. But it's going to go after lows. So this was driving biotech down. You saw, uh, you know, selling in, in all the biotech and we're not talking huge numbers and let's put these on daily so you can see them but here's amgen down uh amgen was down what about two three and three point three percent uh uh some others like uh, biogen biogen was uh actually biogen held in pretty well but was still down 2.3 uh some of the others in the group um Actually, let me just pull up the sector right quick, and we can see them right quick. I'm going by memory when I'm clicking these up, so let's just look at some of these. Here's Alexan. Uh, that one was down, looks like about 3% as well, or 2% or so. 0.73, not that bad. Uh, cell gene we already looked at. Uh, let's look at this one. This is Illumina. Uh, that one actually held up well. Uh, uh, Vertex got hit uh, not too bad, 2%. So you can see it wasn't as bad across the board, uh, but you definitely saw some weaker action across the board in the biotech sector uh, for the most part. So that, uh, you know, the Russell not hurt by that, but certainly biotech was, was uh, you know, felt uh, the brunt of the move. The other one was in... Uh, energy. Now the XLB, uh, to some extent, is is you know feeling some pain, but really it's the XLE that was down. But but the move up and the move back down really not that bad. Down one percent today. Remember, it's trying to do a full retest regen and turn this into a sideways range. That's going to be a tough order. And even though you you know you had a huge spike down, and therefore you got a big bounce up. I suspect these are going to be uh, uh, going sideways for a while and not going higher. If we look on the other side, you know, that was it for the weakness. If you look on the other side, it was pretty much strength everywhere. Here's like the XLK, uh, the XLF, the XLI, and even the consumer discretionary, right? They're all pushing back up to go after those highs. If they get over the highs, just like the indexes, they can go higher. So sectors in general still looking fine. I don't see anything there. If you look at the world markets, they also pushed uh, mostly higher last night. The real damage where damage was done was over in the commodity markets and in the uh, ox markets. So let's start with gold. Here's gold. Gold breaks below last week's low, breaks below this consolidation bar I was talking about and accelerated as a result looks to me like it's going to trade back all the way to uh, looks like about 110 and a half it's going to go after those lows so gold now doing an ABCD structure on the way down that top is uh, roughly 119 uh, your low here was uh, 113 and a half so that's five and a half take five and a half off of this that puts you back at 109, that low, 110.65. 109, 
It's right at the lows. Amazing. This, this looks to take you right back to the lows uh, on the metals. And I'll just draw in that structure real quick here. From there to there, back up. Takes you right back to the lows. Um, silver. Let's look at silver right quick. Is it showing the same thing? And if we see silver, silver is about, well, it's going to try to break. It actually tested and held today. But if silver breaks and does an ABCD down, it's way under the lows. The other places you saw hit commodities wise, UNG just totally blew them out. If I pull over a monthly chart here, this is going to break two swing point lows if it holds on the weekly, which would only leave the lows. And that's pretty amazing. This thing actually wants to blow out the lows again. I hasn't done that in a while, but uh, after consolidating for a year and a half, uh, what, two years, looks like it wants to blow them out. Oil, oil pressing back to try to test the lows. Remember last week, missed it by a penny? Coming back to try to test it again. Now, this may end up being what you want to see, and that is as you test, you get under it, you can't break it down. And if you do that here, you'll also be doing it on the weekly. And if that shapes up that way, oil is going to have to has is going to have put in its lows and that's going to stabilize that market finally. If we look at the dollar, the dollar's still heading higher. It broke out last week, still pressing. If we look at bonds, bonds didn't give it up today. I thought they were going to. They actually flipped around. They made new highs uh, over Fridays. And if we uh, where's the oh, and I wanted to go back to the emerging markets. So now these have been dead in the water. They're getting a big bounce, no volume. They're going to come up and do a retest regen off these prior lows. I suspect that they will probably stymie right in that area. Uh, so they've got their big bounce going, but I don't know that it's going to go very much farther. And we talked about junk bonds. Junk bonds came up. They did a two-bar reversal today at the bearish retest regen that looks like that's going to come back down. So we're starting to see some of those stretched markets on the bounces ready to start giving it up a little bit. We're starting to see sectors, equities pushing up to the highs. Now they may consolidate there or they may simply break them out because the trend definitely is to the upside. Uh, but that's a question of timing, right? Will it happen before Christmas? Will they blow them out? Or will it simply hold and then you come back from Christmas and you blow it out then? I suspect this market's not going to hold. I suspect it's just going to grind and grind and grind into the end of the year. So if you want my synopsis, uh, that's what it is. Let me turn my question to uh, a viewer question or turn my attention to a viewer question. Uh, it has to do with a stock uh, uh, one of the viewers is looking at. Let me pull it up here. It's called Leah, and let's grab it. So these guys, uh, Leah Corporation, this is uh, actually, a, I'm not even sure. Let me, let me see what these guys do. Leah to me means uh, jets, but then again, for some reason, I think that's not true. Let's see. Uh, so they recorded earnings on the 12th. And yeah, so they, they actually started rising since then. Uh, what do they do? This is consumer goods. Manufacturers of symbols and supplies, automotive seating, electrical distribution systems. Uh, so it's all about automotive uh, equipment. Okay, so the question here, and it was actually an interesting question. So, so the gentleman got into this stock targeting, in his mind, targeting uh, a retrace back up to this prior high. So it, it pushes down hard, and then um, I'm not sure exactly where he got in. Uh, he may have told me. It didn't tell me, I guess, but it uh, doesn't really matter. Wherever he got in, he's probably up at this point, unless he got in up here, which, given his comments, I don't think that's true. Uh, so somewhere in here. The question is, is, okay, my target was here, right? But now what do I see? Oh, I see maybe an ABCD structure now that's going to go way past that. 
right? And should I sell at my original target or should I change it? Well, my first point would always be that you don't, you, you don't want to be rigid in your thinking. And so just because you had a target doesn't mean you have to stick with that target. Matter of fact, that might not be the right trade. But what you really want to do is you want to look at that high and you see what kind of resistance you're going to have there. And really, there isn't anything. So then you look elsewhere and you say, is there something else that could stop this? Well, it really was this bar. That was a breakdown, you know, a, that was a, a reversal off the prior bar. And it itself got reversed, but that's where the last time we had some decent volume up in this price range was. Top of that bar, 99.06. Where did we make it to? 99.14, where we got the pullback. Now we got a takeaway bar, the very next bar, and we're coming back up to test that same area. If it gets over this, I can pretty much assure you it's going to try to get to the top. I mean, this is the area where it's going to fail if it fails. So I would be protecting here on a failure, you know, because this, of course, could trade lower. Given that it got earnings and has been pushing up, well, it may get over it. It just went up and tested once, didn't get it, now it's coming back to do it again. But that is your risk point. So the first thing is, is I wouldn't be worried about here as much as I'm worried about here. So I would be watching this and, you know, as long as the general market keeps heading up and this one keeps grinding up as well, then you got a shot at the top. Now, the question is, is what do you do when you get to the top? Well, I wouldn't necessarily you know, expect this thing to fail at the top. If you get this bounce and you get over this, you'll probably get a, recent, a, a reasonably fast drive to the top. And then the question will be is what does it do when it gets there? I wouldn't be surprised to see it get up to about 102, 103, 102.50, 103, and then stymie a little bit and then try to push up again. So what I would be doing is I'd give it a chance to break this top without selling it. But if it stymies there for, you know, let's say two, three, maybe four bars, three or four bars, I would get a little bit more concerned and I might think about taking, say, 20% of it off or something, right? Take a little off. And the reason for that is, think about it this way. If you get up there and you can't get over it, you know, or at least you're having a hard time getting over it, you may get one more retrace to set up another ABCD structure inside the larger one, right, to take it higher. And so what you'd like to do is sell some here and try to buy some back there. Now, what if it doesn't come back and it just keeps going? Well, then you've got 20% of your stock gone. That's the way it goes. But you may get a little push over and a retrace back in in which case you could simply get back in at about where you got out and get another trip back up if that's what it's going to do. So you're trying to set yourself up for a win-win, right? Where if you get the retrace and sold a little bit, then you could put on 20 or 30, 40% more on the way back, right? Try to get an even bigger pop when you go. And if you're wrong, more than likely, you know, breakouts tend to come back. How often? Well, we've seen it's anywhere from about 68 to something like 82%, I think, right? I believe those were the numbers. So somewhere around 68 to 82% of the time, right, a breakout's going to come back within what? Six bars, folks. Six bars. So you want to give your shot at this right by taking some off and then put it back on at a lower price or put it back on at about the same price if it does break out so that's the way I would be looking at it and that's what I'd be trying to do uh, if it were I and the stock now I wouldn't take off too much because you know the stock still looks good looks like it has a good chance to break and there's no reason to just jump out of a position just because that's where you originally thought you were going to Okay, so that's, uh, that's tonight's show. I was just checking. I don't see quotes coming in, uh, so I don't have the ability to show you volumes, but I'm pretty sure those volumes were light as they head right up to the top on the indexes. Again, as always, thanks for joining me. Tell a friend, tell two. Now, I'm L.A. This is and it was your daily Neo TA wrap. Have yourself a great night. Enjoy the family and the holidays, folks.
and I'll see you tomorrow, and we'll wrap up the week. Take care. Good night.